Coming up on this episode of Is It the Real Deal? Follow me. You can fucking come out and ask me. We know the re- reality of what's going on. That was a tussle there, man. I, I did. I do it for y'all. I am a man of the people. We're talking guaranteed Spotify plays, bots, banned Twitter accounts, no refunds, all types of goodness this week. We're talking about clone fluencer and is it the real deal or not? So without further ado. Hit that smash button and like it. Subscribe, it's awesome. Hi, I'm Track Sounds. And I thank you for joining me on another episode of Is It The Real Deal? What's going on, everybody? It's Gare from Track Sounds back again with another Is It The Real Deal episode. This is the irrelevant game show where we dive into different music industry companies, entrepreneurs, record labels, A&Rs, quotations around every single one. We talk about if it's the real deal or not. We give out fake points for anybody that comments below after each piece of criteria. They're about as relevant as your MySpace password at this point. But please do comment below because we really want your opinion. This is not my opinion. I just lay out the case. I am the musical inspector, gadget, musical Texas hammer, all that stuff. Today's contestant is Justin Grome and Clone Fluencer. Uh, I didn't know too much about the company, but I did a little research and it seems like they're a social media marketing company specifically targeting, specifically, specifically targeting musicians, and Twitch streamers. Criteria number one, do they identify a target gullible audience? Are they looking for the up and coming artists? Are they looking for the up and coming producers that don't know better and that don't know any different? So what I was doing was I was looking through hashtags to see what are some different records that pop up. One person that kept popping up with a blue checks, Justin Grome. And he would always put up DM me on Clonefluence. So I decided to look the guy up, look his company up, kind of see what was going on. Widely known professional photographer, artist manager, and iOS developer at the age of 11. Good Lord, he is a, this guy is killing it. Basically, they're a social media company that claims to help with Spotify, SoundCloud, all types of things for different artists. You know, he has no music background at all that I can see. He first jailbroke his eye device when he was 11 and immediately started coding and creating a vice no one at his age has ever seen. Is, is this Justin Grome or is this Steve Jobs Jr.? Apple, I'm not sure if you're hiring but I think you need to be. So I decided to contact Clonefluencer myself from my secret little Instagram that I contact a lot of these random people from. I have no music in it, just a couple pictures on this Instagram anyways. And I immediately got a message back saying I was eligible, which shows how low the bar is to get in here. You can literally have no music and probably absolutely terrible music and still be included. Basically, they offer a three month social media service for 150, six month for 275, and a yearly campaign for 500. Many artists were signed to record labels after teaming with us, having more than 100K listeners. I would love to see who you signed to a record label. Please show me that. I started asking more questions, you know, like, well, how do you do it? And things like that. Just kind of curious of what they were gonna do. They use engagement groups, which is highly highly frowned upon by instagram it's not you know it's, it's a lot of work to be involved in the engagement group so if you're paying to be promoted by them and then they just throw you in an engagement group kind of defeats the purpose of being paying to be involved when you could just find free engagement groups it's on their website and in their presentation they were offering how many streams you could get for each month how many you can buy streaming packages for their Anytime that there is any guaranteed stream amount, that is a major red flag to begin with. So let me know in the comments below for criteria one, do you think they identify a target gullible audience? So moving on to criteria number two, do they use a lot of smoke and mirrors? This is a category I made specifically for this video because this guy, I'm not gonna lie, he is in a lot of publications and you're probably wondering, how can you get in these publications if you're not legit? He was in Yahoo News, Forbes, MSNBC, ABC, KFC, helping top entrepreneurs get PR to the number one authority in their industry. Interesting. We turn nobodies into celebrities. Ordinary social media users into verified influencers. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what you did, yep. So you go to the case studies, Justin Grome. This is one of their clients, apparently. Had very minimal press when he approached us. Apart from a few small blog features, nothing major to work with. He also wanted to get verified on Instagram and Facebook, and we had to name enough we had to obtain enough press coverage to make him eligible. I'll kind of summarize this whole page and link it below. Basically, they had to turn this person with nothing really uh, big to talk about 
to make it look even bigger. They started putting them on different small websites, different small things, just being an entrepreneur and somebody that owns a company, whoop de doo And then they use these platforms to build this leverage into getting verified. It is not a known secret that people can pay PR companies to get them verified, get them in publications. The only one that wasn't covered there was the Forbes Business Council, which that's a huge deal because I, I, I saw it on his bio and Forbes Business Council. I, I When I heard that, I was like, what the fuck is the Forbes Business Council? I had to look it up. So once I started doing my research on it, I came across this article from Blom and Associates, why they turned down the monthly Forbes column. Pretty much to summarize this, the Forbes Business Council is supposed to be an invitation only group for entrepreneurs and businessmen that is, is very elite and only certain people get into it. What actually it is, is an annual fee-based subscription model. You can pretty much pay $1,200 for the year to be any small business or business can be included in this entrepreneur. And then you can get published pieces of content on Forbes within a written article that is basically just an ad. And I mean, I'm not against paying to advertise yourself and get your name out there at all. So, you know, I don't really have a problem with it, but I do have a problem with how they market it as it's some elite special club that only nobody, like no one can get into. Hell, I'm sure if I send an email to Forbes tomorrow, I could pay $1,200 and be a member of the Forbes Business Council. Let me know in the comments below for criteria two, do they use a lot of smoke and mirrors? Third piece of criteria, do they have a no refund policy? This is gonna be quick. There, There's no refunds. It's simple as that. There's you verbatim on their site. Our policy consists of absolutely no refunds. Once you pay, you can opt out of a service, but we don't deliver refunds. Even, there, even in their terms of service, they have a bunch of weird disclaimers. You use these services at your own risk. We are not responsible for the consequences that may occur because of using our service. What the fuck does that mean? There are no guarantees of any kind expressed or implied for the services we provide. Every client's growth is different based on their consistency. I agree with that. But the weird thing about it is you guarantee, you have things that guarantee Spotify plays and Spotify downloads and things like that. So which one is it? Is it, you know, no guarantees of any kind or do you guarantee a certain amount of plays? Because I can't figure it out. That doesn't make any sense. Let me know in the comments below for criteria three. Do you think they have a no refund policy? So moving on to can you prove that it works? This is always a tough one to prove because the only way you can really figure it out is to look at some of the results and the people that they claim. So you go into the results page and there's a few people instantly that pop up first and you kind of look at their numbers and things like that. I went to pretty much everybody's page and most of them don't mention Clonefluence at all on any of their posts. A couple of them even thanked people and they did not thank Clonefluence. I reached out to a few of them too to ask them about this, but she was the only one that had responded before filming. And I asked her, hey, you know, how much did Clonefluence help you with this? And she said, not at all. So she had a whole nother company helping her with her Spotify streams. That should tell you something about that. And if you like, look at these numbers on someone. What the, what the hell does a 9,900, like this, these two blow my mind. So the few of them that even did actually claim clone influence, clone fluencer and whatever the hell this company is called. I wanted to look into their Spotify's right now and see how that they were doing. Okay, 37 monthly listeners now, 140 monthly listeners. Man, they're just going crazy over here. 170, 53 monthly listeners. Spotify campaign, so let's check out a couple of them. But a couple of them he had, he was showing like the growth, like this one right here started seven monthly listeners and it was at now 15,000 monthly listeners. So let's check out what he's at now. Okay, 31 monthly listeners. He went from 11, 1,100 to 11,000. What's he at now? 25 monthly listeners. She was at 709, then she jumped up to almost 1,200. What's she at now? 15. So let me know in the comments below, can you prove that it works? All right, everybody, here we go again. Six round bonus round haul of shame. Are we ready? I guess not. And I'm not even gonna make it anticlimactic. There was no connection at all. This dude has no connections in music. I could find one bit, so it makes sense why he has not been connected to any of our fellow Hall of Shame members. Seriously though, I did not want to make this video bashing Justin and Clonefluence. I, I think he does an okay job with the marketing and branding of himself. I'm not mad at it one bit. And I had to make this video to give another valid point out there to, you know, if you're doing some research on the company, take this with a grain of salt. This is definitely, like I said, this is this does not mean it is all fact at all. I just presented the information I found on the internet. We all know the internet is not 100% true, as we can kind of see through the video. 
Um, so I, you know, what I'm saying may not even be true. I don't know hell at this point anymore. I mean, who knows what's going on? Are we in a simulation? Let me know if anybody in the comments you want to see next or that has been contacting you a whole lot. Until next time, peace. Smash it. Smash the like button, please. Like this channel. Garrett is awesome. And he loves Big Ed. <laughs>